welcome back everyone. My name is Eltamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Disco Elysium. Where we left off last time, well there's a green orby. The speaker tower is silent, but there's no work to organize in the yard below. Uh, we were talking to Everett, or Everett, about uh, the letter that we forged, obviously, because we did not give him a legitimate copy. Does that make us bad people? I mean, kinda. But... That's where we're at. We have a rhetoric chance to open this cargo container. I'm going to take a quick look at our items and make any changes that will improve our rhetoric. Hopefully we have something that will give us a little bit of oomph. And then we can try it. It's only 8% currently, which is fairly low. And it's not a really high chance, obviously. Uh, plus one rhetoric, the polo shirt. Perfect. Conceptualization, no. Uh, it's minus one rhetoric. And is anything giving us minus rhetoric in our current items? No, it is not. So we have plus one rhetoric currently. We also have some skill points, so we can upgrade a little bit of our rhetoric. Actually, we have leveled up rhetoric, or rhetoric a couple of times. Oops, I didn't want to. Just one. Just one for now. Alright. Did I actually save that? Hang on. I think I might have just closed it. No, it worked. Okay, good. What is our percentage now with our plus one gear and our thing? 28%. We're gonna give this a couple of attempts. It's not a particularly high chance. We'll try just a couple times with quick load, and then if it doesn't work, we'll just move on. We don't want to dump all of our points into rhetoric. It doesn't really... There's a limited amount of points you get in the game and we don't want to spend a billion of them on one particular uh, check type. So let's give it a couple of tries here. It's only 30%-ish, so maybe... Let's see. Statistically, we should get it in about four attempts. We'll give it five just in case, but it's not looking great so far. Then again... It worked this time, so I guess it was correct. Despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you, a beacon of light emerges from deep within you. Hello? Is anybody in there? The door stands silent. Satisfied detective, a wry smile crosses the lieutenant's face. Try again. If there's someone in there, I'd like to talk to you. Just like that, you hear a click, then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. From deep within the container, a voice. Ahoy, come on in. The smile disappears. You can't be serious. I knew it. There was somebody in the container. We are geniuses. Anyone who says differently is ro What the hell is going on in here? Uh, okay. Let's go talk to the weird dude. Mega rich light bending guy. The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. It's hard to say anything more about him. You cannot make out any of his details, but you do feel the overwhelming presence of... Capital. The feeling causes all the hairs on your body to stand at attention like soldiers preparing for a review. I squint. Something's amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics do not apply here. They are suspended, distorted, an echo. Trying to visualize the physics at play is liable to give you an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> we got 9. The roll was 20. In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter. Wow. Welcome, come on, make yourself at home. Sorry, I'm not better able to receive you. I wasn't expecting visitors today. You can't hear him exactly, yet you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange, an overwhelming hum covers everything. Voice doesn't escape from him. Now, he claps his hands together, what can I do for you, gentlemen? What you can see of his body appears composed, in a sharp summer suit and yacht shoes. Who are you? Who am I? Oh, I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. There's genuine surprise in his voice. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these days. Anyhow, my name is Rustam Dielder. Investor, license holder, an extremely high net worth, or net worth individual. And you are? Mr. Dielder, I am Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi of the RCM, and this is my partner... The name is Raphael Ambrosius Costo, most likely. Pleasure to meet you, Raphael, he says warmly. I am surprised, in a positive manner, to understand about your exceedingly high net worth name. 
It is not, the lieutenant stops to rub his temples. Never mind. Oh, don't worry, lieutenant. I can tell a good man when I see one. How did you become so rich? The man chuckles. To be perfectly blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself was an extremely high net worth individual back in grad. All I did was take your fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailing boats, bad choices, and unsupervised state policy. And blow. Actually, at the level this guy is, it takes several generations to do that, but alright. What is it like being an extremely high net worth individual? The man exhales with a whistle. I gotta tell you, at first, being rich is a lot of work. You gotta work hard because everything's so darn expensive. You know, prices increase exponentially at this income level. But then, once you've reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out ahead no matter what. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, but that doesn't that take all the fun about it? Or fun out of it? And I say, not really. Hmm. It's great that you've done so well for yourself, but don't you think you owe some of that wealth to the rest of society? Sure, and they benefit when I buy things to stimulate the economy. Do you know how many jobs it takes to build and maintain a racing yacht? Hundreds? Dozens, at least. Of course, in the future it'll all be automated, but my point is this, he says, jabbing his fingers into the air a bit. Every man gets what he earns, it's the height of tyranny to take that from him. Say nothing. Capital, he nods. Makes one speechless, does it not? Blinds like the sun that rises beyond the horizon after a gloomy winter. Hey, hey, all this talk about money has made you lose the thread. What's going on with the light in this place? That's what you need to ask him about. There's something strange about you. What do you mean? His essence seems to signify actual surprise. Well, I don't know how to put it. You look somehow a little different. Are you talking about my chin? No. No, I mean, I can't even see you. It's as if something is happening to the light. Oh, that's what you mean. Yes, I've heard of this effect, though I've never witnessed it myself. Of course, it has something to do with our weiss weissman coefficient. The weiss weissman coefficient is a ratio designed to reflect the difference in net worth between individuals. When the coefficient is close to 1, or 100%, it means one person, one person possesses all the net worth among that group of individuals. It's been observed that, er, that when the weiss weissman coefficient reaches about... 0.96 or so, the laws of physics begin to bend around the high net worth individual. So what is our coefficient? The weiss weissman coefficient for you and this individual appears to be 0.9998 repeating. That's not good for you. Are you telling me you are so rich that light literally bends around your face? Among other things, but calm down. I'm but a lowly, single digit billionaire. I'm calm. That's good. Kim, are you seeing this weird stuff? I see nothing of the sort. To be frank, all I see is a gentleman who's unusually well-dressed for Martinez in a cargo container, which I admit is odd. Yes, I imagine that does look strange to you, my container. You're a rich investor, right? Can I have some money? I don't see how it's appropriate for a representative of the law to ask a wealthy person for money. This shines a bad light on the RCM if you catch my meaning. Come now, there's not even a scent of corruption here. I'm merely being polite, so let me check my, check my pockets. As you may know, us high net worth individuals do not have a lot of cash on hand. Investments and liquidity are enemies of one another. I think I only have coins for coffee machines. Here's three real. How much can you get for this? Are you sure you don't have any more? I thought you were a billionaire. Yes, I'm sure. You know, his eyes narrow. The light seems to bend more aggressively. Maybe you can make that money grow. Come up with an investment plan. How's that sound? These ultra-liberal types love losing huge subs of money on ludicrous proposals. Ergo, you should totally come up with a plan that's totally dead in the water. We have a terrible conceptualization plan. And a slightly higher one that is sure to fail. What are you doing in this container? Traveling. This is a great way to get around. It's fun, it's safe, and it gives me lots of time to think. By the way, let me ask you a question. Where are we exactly? In the very, very early days of colonizing this archipelago, the kingdom of Surin... Surisni? A precursor of modern Surleklef, used to own the city of Revachol. An obscure detail in the bigger picture, but still worth dropping. We're in Revachol, formerly a colony of the kingdom of Surisni. Ah, fellow history buff. I, myself, am currently reading up on Franco-Nigerian era trains. Oh, Franco-Nigerian Eurotrains. Very interesting stuff. It's a shame I can't get out and explore myself. One of the downsides of being an extremely high-net individual is that mobs of low-net individuals are constantly banding together to ask for money. 
Wait, why don't you help them? You've got so much money it can't make a difference to you. There are simply aren't enough hours in a day to hand out all the handouts. It's like feeding seagulls. There are always more, and they never seem to do anything interesting with it, except more seagulls. Spending money is a matter of desire. I'm sure you agree. I don't have the desire for spending it like that. So you travel from place to place via shipping container? Smart, no. It also provides the means to hide from all the targeted advertising we extremely high net individuals are constantly subjected to. Luxury yachts, high fidelity port double radio systems, pale-proof outerwear, and so on. It just gets a bit metal class after a while. A bit bourgeois. Ah, so you're saying being rich isn't worth the hassle. What? No, I didn't say that at all. Being rich is great. Just don't tell anyone I told you that. The bending light appears to wink. Well, we should get back to our investigation. Thank you for your time. We need more conceptualization. Thanks for stopping by. If you ever have an idea you want to pitch me, I'm all ears. I mean, we can try and make more money. Let's see what we can do. Do we have any good conceptualization gear? Maybe? Um, plus one conceptualization shirt. I really wish that this is like, or I really wish we could organize this by skill. That would be kind of neat. But, actually it would be kind of impossible to. Oh, this is a jacket. That gives plus one conceptualization. Anything else? No. So we got two extra conceptualization skills. Why does art inspire you so much? It does, yes, but what is art? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. Would I fit in the art world, I mean? Have you looked in the mirror lately? You have the exact features of a savage art critic, with that beard and those clothes, disheveled and prophetic. Perhaps you should try to critique architecture, too. I guess I have been feeling critical lately. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores, as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real, living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Okay, 50% art critic is what is needed for free me from rote repetition? Then so be it. I opt in. Exactly, it's not only your duty to catch the criminals of the street, you must also apprehend the criminals of the printing press and the gallery, the trait and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticism, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. So we have a new thought pattern, which is now an actual- <laughs> it's just called actual art degree. Um, it's a relatively short one to learn. I also kind of want to learn about the homosexual underground, and also a little bit of the Wompty Dompty Kingdom. But unfortunately, we're really low on, um, thought abilities here. I don't think we can get any more after we finish these. I think this is it. Which is a little bit bad. Because I kind of want... Well, let's see. Let's take a look at some of these other ones that we might be able to pull up later. Bankruptcy sequence, jamais vu. Cleaning up the rooms, the precarious world, the suicide of Krasmazov. I don't even know if we can find all these things. The Jamrock Shuffle sounds like a dance. Aces high, aces low sounds like gambling. Inexplicable feminist agenda. Not really sure where to pick that up. Revisholian nationhood or nationhood. That could be for our communism thing. So I think I'm just going to leave it for now. We're not going to put our thought into that, but it is kind of neat to have. Uh, so... Wait a minute. How much money do I... Something's wrong here. Oh, the closer we get to this guy, the more real we have. That is very interesting. But the further we get away, the more it goes down. And then when we get to the door, it's back to $24, which is all we have currently. I was like right here, and I was like... That looks like an integer overflow problem or something like that, but it's, it's definitely not. It's a real thing that we have. Alright, I'm gonna try... What's our odds on this? Maybe we can put some points into this. 17%. Alright, so... We need some conceptualization. We have a couple skill points. I'm gonna put a couple points into it just to see. We have 8 conceptualization. That should give us a fairly good percentage towards this godly plan. I'm just really curious what it does. We're gonna have to save and tried a bunch of times because even though we just put points into it it's only 42 we failed 
So let's try again. I really want to succeed at this check because I really want to know if we get a bunch of money for this, it'd be kind of nice because we can go buy some things. We did it. Deploying high concept buzzword generator. All systems functional. Ready to engage in three, two, one. It's time to disrupt the future. You gotta stay lean, innovate, and focus on what matters most. The children. You should invest in a youth center. A youth center, huh? What kind of youth center? A place to teach them practical skills like skills like teamwork and self-discipline. Come on, tell him what he wants to hear. Hmm. One dedicated to instilling liberal economic values in children from low net worth families. Brilliant. Without children, children who will be to buy stuff in the future. Yes, and if it doesn't work out, we can always repurpose the center as a shopping mall or private equity firm. When life closes a door, it opens a window, yes? What's the expected return on this? Highly educated, work ready, human capital ready to be directed towards any number of your vast interests. You're deep into ultra liberal territory now, good work. Very impressive, you got a natural eye for unusual investment opportunities. I know. I don't normally do this without a formal pitch deck, but to hell with it, what's the point of being rich if you have to follow all the rules? Here's a round of seed funding. This should be enough to prove the concept, prove out the concept, and get things off the ground. Cha ching, what'll it be? Speed? Vodka? Cigarettes? Thank you for placing your unwavering trust in me. Remember, it's not a handout, it's an investment, and I expect to see returns. The lieutenant stands there dumbfounded. His mouth opens slightly, then closes again. Is he having a stroke? <laughs> Kim, are you having a stroke? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, I am not having a stroke. You're just still full of some surprises. Most of them bad, but some good. The lieutenant has granted you an aura of legitimacy. Bathe in it, but don't let your satisfaction show. Play it cool. We should get back to our investigation. Thanks for your time. That was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, Kim. He's just like, what the f- How? What? <laughs> we were a train wreck a day ago, now we're, we're a couple days ago, and now we are pitching ideas to billionaires that they accept. That's gotta be a odd moment for Kim Kitsuragi. I wonder what that gave us, actually. Let's take a look here. Uh, we can go to... Not there. Here? No, that's our quest thing. Okay. Uh, we are 24 communists, 11 fascists, 6 ultra-liberal, 3 moralist. We're mostly a superstar cop and apocalypse cop. We're also a very sorry cop, and we are only a one boring cop. But there was a way you could see, um, like, stat bonuses not related to thoughts, though, I thought. Things like that you get for doing certain things. Uh, where would that be located, though? Maybe it's not that. Maybe you just get things from thoughts, I guess. Oh, well. Let's get out of here. We have a couple things to do still in this video. One, we have to go confront that guy's father. And steal his drugs. I'm glad we have some money now. How do we get back there? I think it's this way. But I think we need to go down to there, if I'm not mistaken. Which means we need to go around, which is slightly annoying, but whatever. Ah, oh, that sound. Ugh. Let's go take a look at how to steal things. We might fail. This looks. This seems to be more of like a physical check type situation that we're coming up to with this guy's father and the drugs. But you never know. We could find out. I don't think we have any bottles to return, but we do have some money now. I wonder how to invest in like a youth center. I, like a hundred bucks is not enough to build a youth center, obviously. Uh, that's not the right... Yes, it's the right way? I think it might be the right way. No, I don't think it's the right way. I think we have to go to the- oh yeah, we do. Damn it. Alright. Around we go. Why is there no hole in the fence on the other side? We make this so much easier. Such a long trek. Also, I'm pondering in the near future in the new year, I mentioned this in a couple videos ago, uh, live streaming on Friday evenings. I'm looking for suggestions for games, and it's going to be on Twitch. 
probably. What is this? Another splattering of bullet holes on this wall. You hear the sound of running water. Someone's washing dishes. This isn't the right house. Alright, let's take a look here. Split okay. Enter flat 12 in the Capeside apartment building. Oh, okay. So it's this building, I believe. But yeah, I'm looking for games to do live stream. I am open to pretty much any suggestion. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any games you would like to see a live stream mode. It's going to be more interactive with people, obviously, because live streams are more interactive in general. Now, which one is number 12? Is this number 12? It is not. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Krasmazov. Honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. Kim, you have to admit this Krasmazov bears a striking resemblance to me. Actually, Father Mazov, the hero of the working class. I salute the statue. Whoever lives here definitely shares your enthusiasm. He leans closer to inspect the photos of revolutionaries on the wall. There are many communities around, not after the revolution. Some youths still keep the ideolo ideology going, it seems. He does have a resemblance to me. Hold on a second, is this why you broke in here to find out whether you're Krasmazov? I have to consider and investigate all possibilities. Except that Krasmazov is dead. He's been dead for 50 years now. Just humor me for a moment. Don't you see the resemblance? Well, you both do seem to share an affinity for sideburns, but it seems like old Kras here didn't drink nearly as much as you. Maybe this bust shows him... Actually, yeah, I have a problem. A problem with alcohol. You do, but that's not the point. The point is, he doesn't look like you. How do you know? The bust is probably just a romanticized depiction of him anyways. Very well, the lieutenant leans closer to the sculpture. Let's look for identifying features then. He puts a finger on the pale dot embellishment of the bust's cheekbone. Doesn't he have a birthmark right here? What about you? I definitely- uh, I can't tell, I can't see my face. Alright, but here's the big thing. Krasmazov looks Samaran, and you don't. I'm part Samaran myself. The lieutenant closes his eyes. Okay, you win. Be Krasmazov then, I don't care. He opens his eyes again, tilting his head in quiet wonder. Why are you so hellbent on proving that you're Krasmazov anyways? Because I believe a powerful nation-state is the only way to protect the working class from subhumans. I think you have misunderstood who he was, but the lieutenant sighs. If you say so. We gained a thought called the suicide of Krasmazov. Oh, uh, now we need to find these drugs. This is not apartment 12. It might be out on this balcony over here. It's definitely not that one. And it's definitely not this one. Although there's a thing we can get 10 cents off of. The sea below looks cold and winter gray. Let's go to the balcony. After this video, I think I'm going to head to bed. I have a just a massive headache right now. Kind of wish I had saved before I walked into this room. Now that I think about it. Oh, this is the coal place. Is there any checks in here? I don't think so. At least not yet. Might be on the other side then. We gotta find this apartment 12. How hard could it be to find apartment 12? Unless it's in the other... No, because the other apartment... The other building's not an apartment complex. It's the continuation of the cursed commercial zone or whatever it's called. Oh, there's a thing here. A note reads, foreclosed by Martinez Realty Associations. Alright, let's continue on our way. It might be this one up here, actually. Let's go check these two out. There are two here. One we have not seen the inside of. This is it. A shabby door hangs oddly on its hinges, secured to the door frame with a safety chain. An unpaid electrical bill is attached, threatening to cut off electricity. It's addressed to Mr. Uno de Ruther. Your heartbeat, quick, your heartbeat quickens, palms go sweaty. The siren of amphetamine is singing you her song. Oh, we have to change it to, uh... Looks like we found where Kuno's dad lives. I point to the bill on the door. The lieutenant nods, and the place comes with three months' worth of utility bills. Alright, let's put the chain cutters on. But we're keeping our... bag of stuff in our hands. Alright, this is an easy check. Snip, the cutter goes through them like dead leaves. The links fall to the ground on the other side of the door. The lieutenant looks worried. I know there's no stopping you, but let's, let's at least make this quick. He's not here. Good. 
Glossy erotica covers the wall, wrinkled from moisture. Let's save. He is apparently asleep. Actually, there's a desk here first. The air stinks with something sour. A phone book lies open on the table, covering a stack of utility bills. Right next to it, in plain sight, sits a small bottle of amphetamines, conveniently equipped with a straw. Lieutenant of located psychoactive substances on this table. Good, confiscated. The minuscule amount of amphetamine doesn't interest the lieutenant in the slightest. He listens and said something in the other room. Take the speed. You pocket the bottle as if it were the most natural thing in the world. Don't wait, celebrate. Blast that shit right here. Take the inventory of it once this boring table shit is done. We're not gonna take the drugs voice in my head. Let's go and see about this guy. A bundle of clothes heaped on the bed, a stained parka, some towels, and a duvet. Some socks, even. In the dark, it looks like a nest. Hold up, Lieutenant. Look at that pile of clothes. Mm-hmm. The Lieutenant has covered his nose. Slowly reach out your hand. Something underneath there is breathing. Keep extending my hand towards the pile. Your hand touches a greasy duvet covered in cigarette burns and ketchup stains. You hear a growl. There is something alive underneath it. I pull the blanket off. You see a 60-year-old, fat, red-headed man passed out from large amounts of alcohol, and God knows what's el what else. The smell of shit rises from his mouth. You don't have to take him down, he's already down. <clears throat> is this Kuno's father we're seeing? Judging by the color of his hair, I would say it is. One sec. Sorry, I just had to clear my throat. The lieutenant's right. The man's unwashed hair builds or bears a familiar ginger tone. Even the hair on his chest is coppery. The light from the window falls into his half-open eyes. I was expecting something worse. I think he's still quite bad. I mean, what has he come to? The lieutenant tilts his head. The man won't be feeding his family anytime soon. Not that he was, but... The lieutenant thinks to himself, at least he won't be beating his son. A pair of half-open bug eyes is staring back at you from the dark, empty and frozen. It's clear the person behind them is not awake. This is serious damage. I'm not sure he's not dead. Suddenly the man starts growling. Three words manage to escape his mouth, along with a strong stench of alcohol. Fucking... K -p -p -i. Looks like he's trying to communicate. Hang on, we're gonna save and then try the perception check. It's a pretty high chance, but... The man groans once, but his tongue keeps failing him. It's impossible to make out the syllables. A hand emerges from the blankets, trying to gesticulate something. Then it dawns upon you, clear and surreal. Pigs, he says. He's trying to call you pigs. What did you just say? His hand falls back on the bed, limp and defeated. A loud snore escapes his mouth. He's sleeping again. At least he got to say his piece. Kim, is this thing even alive? I'm afraid it is. Look, it moves. He points to a fleshy lump sticking out from the other end of the blanket. The limb seems to be twitching from time to time. And look, the other foot is camouflaged by a striped sock bearing the name Maxdoor on the sole. Three toes are poking out of a hole. Maxdoor is a gas company. He's wearing free socks from a gas company. They probably came with the bills. A groan rises from the man's throat to dry like a death rattle. He's trying to say something in his sleep. Maybe we should help him somehow? What's there to do? We could turn him on his side so he doesn't choke on his own vomit, but he's already on his side. Excellent form. We could take him to the Remedic or Saint or Remedy or Saint Baptiste, but he doesn't have any money for medical services. The almshouse would turn him down. They don't do charity work for people who are trying to kill themselves. Besides, he'll be dead in a few. The lieutenant stops listening to him. Years, months, weeks. The pile of blankets grunts miserably. Take your amphetamines, old man. Silence. Only heat emanates from the sleeping body. He wouldn't be too thrilled to learn you stole his stash. It was the last thing keeping him functional. Well. We did hear about his calling us pigs. I guess that's something. There's also a basket here. Like a laundry basket? It's got some change in it. Good enough. We do have $126, which is the most money we've ever had in this game. By a lot, actually. And we're going to save it by not sleeping in the whirling in rags, because we are cheap. And we're going to stay in the free shack... I should just shoot this person in the head, because she is just the worst character. In the game, I think the worst character is C, which is Kuno's friend, and then followed very, very shortly by Kuno himself. They are nearly equally bad, but I'm pretty sure C is worse than Kuno. 
Let's go take this, these pills to Kuno, finish that quest, and we'll call it a video. Hi Kuno, we made it. We found your dad's drugs. Fuck, there's Kuno key! <sighs> I took care of your drug situation. Alright, so you got Kuno's Kilo. He rubs his hands together. Here's how we do it. First you give Kuno Kuno's Kilo, then Kuno gives you half back. That's how we split it. It's the best way, street way. Aren't you gonna ask how I got past your dad? Word on the streets that you sent your little friend in dressed as a hooker? Distraction style. That's some sick shit. He nods approvingly at Kim. Not a single muscle moves on the man's face. Kuno wants to hear all about it, but first we split the Kilo. He leans in, then we shoot the shit. By Kilo, you mean Graham, right? Kuno knows what Kuno means. Kuno means Graham. Alright, fair is fair. I give him the vial. Oh, that's heavy. He waves the minuscule bottle around and slips it into his coat pocket. Out comes another similar vial from the shock above his running shoe. Here you go. More than half in there. Kuno's fucking honorable like that. There's no movement on the lieutenant's face as he stares intently at the trash container. Now tell me, how the fuck are you still alive, pig? I looked around in there. It's not the easy life you've got going on in that apartment. The fuck do you know about Kuno's life? Kuno's got plans. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we got plans. Could I met your dad? Yeah? You do some Sambo shit? Sneak in? He looks at the lieutenant. Is the hooker thing real? Sambo is an acronym for Samaritan Boxing. Graceful martial arts stuff. Sambo style implies stealth, cleverness, and cool. Just letting you know. Kuno, your dad is a half-dead alcoholic. He was sleeping under some clothes. What? His eyes become large and round. His posture changes. The swaying rooster motion stops for a second. Then he gets a goading again, reorienti reorienting himself. Fuck, right, Kuno's dad was sleeping like a bum. He snaps back. Kuno told you. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. Fucking breaking and entering shit, that's nothing to Kuno's dad. You got lucky, pig. Kuno knew this. He points to himself. Kuno's fucking violent, fiend. Dad's been drinking hard lately. Kuno knew you'd have a way in. Narrow window. Kuno window. Kuno window? Whatever scary thing he might have been, now he's nothing. Yeah, Kuno's dad is a fucking nothing. He pushes on bravely. Fucking coma shit. Stroke shit. Kuno's dad is so fucking violent he's had a stroke so many times. Shit. Kuno's dad's gonna have one- or Kuno's gonna have one too. Gonna be just like Kuno's dad. Speed shit, crime shit, fucking on the bed. Kuno's gonna go out like Kuno's dad, Revishal West style. Stop saying all this sad shit, Kuno. The whisper comes smaller than usual. There's a touch of grief in there. Fuck are you talking about sad? The kid breathes in and out like a boxer. Kuno's got hard shit, he punches the air. Death shit, nothing shit. You don't have to turn into that. Get your fucking nun ass out of here before Kuno fucks it dead. He punches the air again. You think just because you brought Kuno one gram of speed you're friends now? Turn into... He pants from exhaustion. Kuno ain't turning into that shit. Kuno is. Kuno is that shit. Kuno won. You won, Kuno. The relief is palpable. The little hat jumps up and down behind the fence. He did not win. There's a crack in there now, and it's spreading across the face of his certainty. There were tons of unpaid bills in there. Fucking right, there were fucking three years or some shit. You can guess. There's no place... That's no place to live in. You have to find somewhere else. That's right, it's a shithole. Kuna's gonna move underground. Le Royal. Shit. Ancient shit. Kuna's gonna live in a fucking catacomb. Yeah, in a tomb, Kuno. The little one seems overjoyed at the prospect. Okay, let's conclude this business. Yeah, pig, this shit is done. He spits on the ground, yellowish foaming spit. Now get the fuck out of Kuno's face. Kuno needs to drop the bomb. Alright, well... We tried. That was a bunch of experience, too. We got another skill point, which means we're now at two. What do we have for checks that we managed to f mess up? I'll see it. I'll see. We got physical instrument, which is the sleeping dock worker. We haven't done that one yet. We haven't done the shivers, lead, or the novelty dice maker one. We haven't done the electrochemistry bird nest. Where's that one? I don't remember where that one is. Bird's nest roy. Electrochemistry. I actually don't recall where that one is. The warded door. Oh, it shows on the map. Okay. But it's not showing this one. Okay, novelty dice maker's there. Don't know where the dock worker is at the moment. The barbell's in there. The warded door is also in there, I think. Lily and the net picker has the suggestion. Heroic, that is the, you know, join me in bed or in a date one. But... I need to meet near the old fish market at 2200 and get my weapon back. That's what we're doing now. We have to go to report to Lena in the Whirling and Rags, but it is 35 minutes into the video, so we should probably call it here. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. 
Otherwise, I'll see you all next time, and we will go tell her about the traps. Take care.